Welcome to the Dallas Vega Town News for Report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. I'm Nicola Barto. Let's take a look at the headlines. The Financial Intelligence Unit is set to be reinforced with additional authority limiting persons engaged in money laundering activity. The history of China and Trinidad and Tobago's diplomatic ties on display at NALIS. And the Prime Minister extends Mother's Day greetings and it is her hope that these sentiments are shown all year through. Thank you for joining us. Legal Affairs Minister the Honourable Prakash Ramadai is set to further empower the Financial Intelligence Unit of Trinidad and Tobago to go after persons involved in money laundering. He made the revelation during Friday's sitting of the lower house. The Financial Intelligence Unit will be given more teeth to go after money launderers and criminals. Legal Affairs Minister Prakash Ramada made the revelation during his contribution to the Administration of Justice Bill 2014 in the lower house on Friday. He notes that a Legislative Review Committee, LRC, is currently working on improving the legislation. The FIU will become possibly the most important unit Correct. to restore what is right and proper in this nation because it will be given and we are doing that. We, 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 the People's Partnership, not you PNM, to give the authority to them to follow the money so that time may come soon when that power is unleashed. The aim is to give more legislative authority to the unit for the apprehension of those involved in such financial crimes. Minister Ramadar says that the Office of the Attorney General will oversee the spearheading of the changes. The Attorney General, I want to compliment him. He has brought legislation, and I see some members of his of the team who may have worked on it here, they were here earlier, that will give further potency to the FIU to follow the money. While the announcement comes ahead of the passing of senior counsel Dana Sitahal, her sister Susan Francois heads the FIU. Minister Ramada described the move as her carrying on the works of Dana in clamping down on criminal activity. These things don't happen overnight. They do not happen overnight. These are institutional changes and a whole concept and a philosophy and an and a, and a, and a issue of having the drive and heart to be really belong to the order of the brave to do these things. And you know the irony? You spoke of the death of Dana. You know who heads that FIU? Her sister. Now, the reason I make that connection is this. The, the, sometimes the stars align in the most evil of things, the most hideous of experiences for change to come. And if Dana's life is to mean anything, and I've worked with her for 25 years, she always sought justice. This government is giving the resource to all the institutions to restore justice in the society. The Financial Intelligence Unit FIU of Trinidad and Tobago is incorporated under the Financial Intelligence Act of 2009 and has been established to implement the anti-money laundering policies of the Financial Action Task Force FATF, an intergovernmental organization. The main objective of this task force is to develop and provide international policies to combat money laundering and the financing of terrorism. Kimbaram Kalawan, News 4. The opening of a photographic exhibition of the 40th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between the People's Republic of China and Trinidad and Tobago took place at the Nalis Library in Port of Spain. This photographic exhibition will continue to foster combined efforts between the countries. Now relations are expected to move from strength to strength as 2014 will be noted as a watershed moment in this country's ever-expanding relations. <laughs> Nalis has collaborated with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China on a number of occasions with the focus on developing and fostering the relationships between the two nations. This is the fourth exhibition to be held at the National Library featuring Chinese works and the people of China. Uh, I would like to say... Uh, Although uh, the size of the two countries are different and uh, there's a long distance between our two countries, but we have shared a common pursuing. In addition, Nalis has received several donations in the form of books on the history of the people of China, 
with the aim of seeking to strengthen the relationship and increase interaction between the two countries. Though Chinese culture has had an established foothold in Trinidad culture since 1806, when the first wave of Chinese immigrants arrived on our shores, government-to-government -government cooperation between the two countries began to blossom in the early 70s. It was in 1971, at the 26th session of the United Nations General Assembly, that the government of Trinidad and Tobago took the decision to actively support the restoration of the People's Republic of China's rights in the United Nations as the only legitimate representative of China to the United Nations. It was then three years following this historic decision that Trinidad and Tobago and China formally established diplomatic relations on June 20th, 1974. In this 40-year span, we have witnessed the diplomatic relations between our two countries taking on greater significance. In 2014, in reciprocation to President Xi's visit and with a view to adding a Philip to the active bilateral relationship between our two countries, our Prime Minister, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisesa, paid an official visit to the People's Republic of China. The Prime Minister's visit to China was the first by a head of government of Trinidad and Tobago in almost 30 years. During the visit of Prime Minister Kamala Prasad Bisesa to China, she opened many doors for greater cooperation for our country in a myriad of ways. The PM also heralded the dawn of a new stage for the two countries when she officially opened the Trinidad and Tobago Embassy in Beijing. With the view to ensure that the year 2014 is truly a memorable one for Trinidad and Tobago, government of TNT along with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China will team up on a number of events. Nala says it looks forward to continued collaboration with the Embassy of the People's Republic of China. In other news, it was only last month international rating agency Moody's Investors Services reaffirmed Trinidad and Tobago's BWA1 sovereign credit rating. Speaking at last Thursday's post-Cabinet media briefing, Senator the Honorable Larry Hawaii, Minister of Finance and the Economy, said Cabinet had only recently received a copy of what he describes as a positive rating. The Modi's report stated that the Trinidad and Tobago economy is expected to maintain a positive momentum in 2014 and forecasted growth of 2.9% in this year and a further picking up to 3.2% in 2015. The report stated that this will be driven by increased exploration activity and foreign investment in the energy sector as well as public infrastructure projects. Sent to the Honorable Larry Hawaii, Minister of Finance and the Economy, spoke of the international rating at a Thursday's post-cabinet media briefing. Moody's has classified government strengths as very high due to its, moderate, its relatively moderate debt burden and comparatively high debt affordability. The government's balance sheet was cited as one of the factors that contributed uh, to the reaffirmation of this positive credit rating. Um, this balance sheet, of course, also includes a heritage and stabilization fund, which has continued to perform well, increasing from 5.1 billion US dollars to 5.3 billion dollars at the end of the quarter ended March of this year. Um, they, they have also identified that this heritage and stabilization fund is close to 20% of gross domestic product, and they see that this is significantly contributing to the strengthening of the country's balance sheet. Minister Hawaii also revealed that Moody's noted that the sovereign credit profile also benefited from a moderate and affordable debt burden and a very strong external position anchored by a sizable foreign exchange reserves buffer. So by and large they have continued to express confidence in the economy and in its ability to maintain its momentum going forward. So ladies and gentlemen, this rating confirms um, and underlines the success of the continuing efforts by government to improve the quality of life for all our citizens, to transform the economy, to create new jobs, and to provide improved services without deteriorating the country's fiscal metrics. 
The government is fully con um, cognizant of the fact that we remain an economy that is highly dependent on the energy sector. And we also recognize the fact that there, there do exist infrastructural deficiencies, and as well as competitiveness challenges that we need to address. But all of these are, are, are being addressed. Minister Hawaii added that the rating confirms continuing efforts of the government to improve the quality of life for citizens, transform the economy, create new jobs, and provide improved services without weakening the country's fiscal metrics. Moody's Investor Services Assessment of the Performance of the TNT Economy was conducted at the beginning of April 2014. Felicia Wilson, more News 4. News 4 continues right after the break. Stay with us. Did you know that pensioners and persons in receipt of an income lower than $3,500 are eligible for a subsidy in their electricity and water bill? While well, the Public Utilities Ministry is looking to ensure that persons are informed of their benefits and they are hosting several information sessions at regional zones. In its most recent session held in San Fernando, the Ministry highlighted the requirements for becoming a recipient of this subsidy. The Ministry of Public Utilities held its Southwest District leg of the Utilities Assistance Program Information Sharing Session at the Paria Suites Hotel. The social intervention, which was first introduced in 2010, provides financial assistance to eligible citizens in need of aid in accessing basic utilities such as water and electricity. In opening the session, which saw delegates from neighboring regional corporations, San Fernando, Pinal Debe and Point Fortin, Line Minister Nizam Bak says that the outreach symbolizes the need to ensure the effectiveness and impact of the program are felt at all quarters of the nation. The success of any social intervention, such as the UAP, is dependent on the ownership and buying by all stakeholders. And so at this juncture, we saw it fitting that we reach out to you who comprise an important group of stakeholders to share the information on the program, but perhaps more importantly, to hear from you, to obtain feedback on any concerns you may have so that we can improve the service to all the beneficiaries of the program, who we see as our very important and valued customers. Since its inception, the program has impacted over 12,000 lives across the country. Minister Bach says his ministry is continuing efforts to improve its efficiency and remove hurdles that might hinder its effectiveness. From feedback gathered, the participants found the sessions to be extremely useful, bringing clarity to a lot of aspects in the program and allowing us to hear firsthand about some of the challenges faced by the applicants and prospective applicants. We are also privileged to hear from you very meaningful suggestions on how to remove some of the barriers so that we can have maximum access to the program by those of our citizens who need it most. Manager of the Customer Service Unit, Mauricio Pegas, explained who are eligible for the program. The persons who can, who can benefit from this bill assistance component would be, of course, those mentioned before, recipients of the senior citizens' pension, the disability or public assistance grants, or persons who are receiving the TT food card. It has also been extended to persons over the age of 65 who earn an income or pension of $3,500 or less. It's also extended to persons with a certified disability who receive a monthly income of $3,500 or less. So what this means is that you, you no longer only have to be a recipient of the Ministry of the People and Social Development in order to benefit. Once you are a pensioner or you are disabled and you are earning under $3,500, you are able to benefit from this bill assistance subsidy. She explained how the program works to make an impact on your utility bill. When it is sent to TNTEC, if the person is applying for the electricity subsidy, TNTEC will also check to ensure that the person is a residential customer and that their consumption over the last three billing periods does not exceed 500 kilowatts. 
Once the applicant has been approved according to the program's criteria, the subsidies apply directly to the applicant's account. That means that they will see it on their next bill when it comes out. They don't need to go into WASA to check for it, and they do not need to call back WASA to ask about it. It will be applied directly to their account. The UAP's information sharing session is expected to move to Princess Town and Tobago in the coming weeks. Kimbram Kalawan, News 4. In other news, the Metal Industries Company Institute of Technology in Diego Martin has been officially opened, making it the 16th center operated by the MIC Institute of Technology. Chairman of the institution, David Lee, delivered opening remarks and noted that MIC prides itself on its commitment in the development of the human capital. He said there will be specialized training for the Diego Martin area. David Lee, chairman of the MIC Institute of Technology, described the opening of the MIC Institute of Technology in Diego Martin as a momentous occasion in the growth of the institution. Mr. Lee says the Diego Martin Technology Center has been rationalized by MIC as an institution for the integration of technical and vocational education and skills training in the western region of Trinidad. He said this rationale coincides with the vision of sent to the Honorable Fazil Karim, Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, to decentralize the education and training offerings to the nation's youth, making skills training more accessible to everyone, no matter where they reside. This will be the 16th center opened by the MIC Institute of Technology and will allow persons from Digo Martin, Carinage, Pitti Valley, Chagaramas, Kokorit, and Environs easier access to the quality training options provided by the MIC Institute of Technology. With the population of this catchment area being well over 100,000, this center is indeed strategically located. As with the other centers operated by the MIC Institute of Technology, a needs-based assessment of Diego Martin and environments was conducted to determine the training options to be offered at this center. One of the goals of the MIC Institute of Technology is to ensure that our training is matched to skills that are high in demand. Mr. Lee says the center will contribute to the enhancement and holistic development of Diego Martin and environs for the residents. Meanwhile, in his feature address, Senator the Honorable Fazil Karim, Minister of Tertiary Education and Skills Training, noted that it was government's policy to ensure that every citizen was given the chance to educate themselves and learn a life skill. He said government understood that access to education was vital. Why are you building additional centers? Why are you expanding this sector? Well, it's a very simple and easy answer. I am engaging with my colleagues in two letters that lead to other letters. It's O, opportunity, and A, access, that leads to A, achievement, and A, accomplishment. That is what this is about. It is bringing, ensuring that we bring to our citizens that none shall be left behind, and that we shall not discriminate on the basis of where you live, and regardless of which constituency you are, you are all citizens of this country and you will have opportunity and access for education and training. The Technology Center will be the training hub of approximately 200 students of the Industrial Craft Program. This program is designed to provide trainees with skills in various occupational areas, including air conditioning and refrigeration, auto and diesel, book binding and print finishing, dressmaking and design, electrical installation, food preparation and culinary arts, machine shop, plumbing, welding and other in-demand skills. Felicia Wilson, more news for. Sport is up right after the break.
thank you for staying with us. It was a must-win situation for the defense force when they faced the Valencia Heat in Game 3 of the semifinals in the Mackeson Super 10 Basketball League. The defending champions were up against it, following two straight losses and battled for the playoff uh, live at the Jean Pierre Sports Complex. Wayne Cunningham has the highlights. The Valencia Heat went into Game 3 of the Super 10 Basketball League semifinal with a 2-0 series lead, falling in 94-88 victory in Game 1, which was followed by a 78-68 win last Tuesday. But the Northeastern squad came into the encounter without two key players, as forward Wayne Richards and guard Jonathan Weeks were nursing serious injuries following the 10-point Game 2 triumph. Both teams seemed nervous, and as a result, the first quarter was painful to watch. But it was Valencia with a slight lead after one. The second started well for the defense force as star player Stephen Leiter Lewis grabbed the rebound and went coast to coast. He then kissed one off the glass from under the rim to spark the military to life. Valencia were not overawed by that and their big players also showed up. Mario Davis with three of his 13 points on the night, following the two-pointer. Kevon Noriega with two of his 16 points, as a timeout is called by the defense force. Valencia did not let up though, as they took an eight-point lead at the half. They kept up the pressure in the third, with center Dwayne Virgil making his presence felt in the paint. He had 16 to go along with his five rebounds, 63-57, the lead after three. The defense force made a fourth quarter run, led by Kevin Bachwain, who had 14. And of course, Leiter Lewis, who had a game-high 35 points, which is also the best individual effort for the series. The younger, faster Heat squad countered by using those assets to their advantage. The military men, on the other hand, have been in the final on 10 occasions and won it all five times. So they were not going to go away easily and pull within one point with just over a minute remaining and then grab the lead. Noriega answered for Valencia. Followed by some dogged defending by their high scorer Fabrice Fisher, who had 22. The Heat held on for an 82-81 win and a place in the final. The first final for the pride and joy of the East, and they will await the winner of the Petro Jazz Caledonia Clippers series. We in Cunningham, News for Sports. When we come back, the Prime Minister's Mother's Day message. Stay with us. As the nation's mothers celebrated Mother's Day with their loved ones, showering them with praises, Prime Minister the Honourable Kamlo Pesad Bissasa has called for this display of affection to not be limited to just one day. The Prime Minister issued her annual Mother's Day message acknowledging the efforts of those strong women throughout the years. Prime Minister the Honourable Kamla Pesad Bissasa SC has commended all mothers across Trinidad and Tobago for their courage and strength as the bearers of many roles, including protector, provider, teacher, healer, and friend. The Prime Minister's statement came as part of her Mother's Day 2014 message. Mrs. Pasad Bissessa, a mother and grandmother herself, extended heartfelt best wishes to all the mothers and prayed that their hearts be filled with joy and their faces marked with smiles. 
She thanked them for all they have done for their families, communities, and by extension the country, as she acknowledged the many sacrifices and difficult decisions made bravely by mothers. Mother's Day has been celebrated for 100 years on the second Sunday of May, and the Honorable Prime Minister said she wanted mothers to know they are deeply appreciated and their worth cannot be measured, nor can their selflessness be repaid. She called on them to not get caught up in the whirlwinds of bouquets, cards and chocolate delights they would have received on the day and not to allow the significance of the day to slip through their fingers. Mrs. Basad Bissessa urged mothers to look upon those they have nurtured, knowing that their legacies live within them, and she prayed that they would always keep their children close and guide them as they continue to grow. The Prime Minister called on the nation's children to understand that Mother's Day was not the only day to show love to those who have been a mother to them, as love is not restricted to a day or a singular deed. She said the same love and appreciation should be shown now and always so that there would be very little to regret when our loved ones are no longer with us. Nikolai Edwards, News 4. Well, that's how we wrap up this edition of our News 4 report, a product of the Government Information Services Limited and the Ministry of Communications. Now remember, you can view a repeat of our newscast weekdays at 6 a.m. And feel free to visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash RTV4. I am Nicola Barito. Thank you for joining us.